Welcome to Ohm Times TV, a division of Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting. Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. The link between sex, creativity, and the sense of aliveness is strong. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution? or perhaps for emotional healing. Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on the Eros Evolution Show here on Ohm Times Radio and TV. Hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sex, spirituality, and everything in between meets. Today is going to be the last show uh, for a while. I'm going to be taking a break. So uh, this episode, we'll be talking about body love, diversity, and inclusiveness. Is it possible to love your body when it's different from others? So what happens when you have a health condition like PCOS or birthmark that is not typical of the definition of beauty? So in this episode, I have uh, Ro Rosalie uh, Marjorie. Uh, and a Singapore plus size beauty queen, uh, Fiona Tan, who will be exploring body love, diversity, diversity and inclusiveness in the face of health conditions. Uh, how have they stood uh, in the time of bullying, judgment and discrimination? What kind of world are we advocating for and how can each of us make a difference? So all these and more in this episode. So R Rosalie um, Marjorie uh, is the founder of True Complexion and an advocate of diversity, inclusive, uh, inclusion, and mental health. So once a young girl who was insecure and bullied because of her birthmark, she has made it her mission to provide a safe space for teenagers and adults to overcome their limiting beliefs, insecurities, so as to harness their strengths, uniqueness, and own their authentic power. So she was awarded the 2022, that's this year, Global Women in Leadership Award and the 2019 Women of the Future Southeast Asia Award. She was also selected for the 2019 uh, Obama Foundation Leaders Asia Pacific Program and the 2019 um, SN, however, um, Fellowship Global Program. And is one of the faces of IT Cosmetics Regional and Global Beauty Campaign for two consecutive Yes, so you can find her on Instagram, Rosalie uh, Marie, that's R O Z E L L A uh, M A R I E, and on Facebook, True Complexion. Uh, and the same, uh, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about Fiona. So, Fiona uh, Tan uh, is a plus size a beauty queen. So, her weight increased after chickenpox at eight and was haunted by negative comments. So, undaunted by criticism, she worked towards body positivity and won the international title of Miss Top of the World Plus Size 2016. So hear her out uh, as she talks about her struggles with PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which has affected her moods, hormones, weight and sexuality. So now as a beauty queen, uh, Fiona empowers women by coaching through beauty, wellness and confidence. She's a, an online entrepreneur and makeover stylist. So primarily focus on beauty, wellness as well as converting spendings into earnings for her customers and followers. She's a beauty trainer and national director for beauty pageants too. She's empathetic, friendly, and down to earth. So you can find her on Instagram, that's miss.fi.t. And on Facebook, that's uh, prince, princessx.fi. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Martha. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so uh, maybe we can start with uh, Rosalie. Uh, you uh, you can share more about uh, your personal story. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, it's pronounced Rosella. <laughs> I, I know it's a complicated name to say. <laughs> uh, so I was actually born with a birthmark on my face and, you know, growing up, it's difficult, you know, being a young girl who doesn't look like all the other girls in the magazine, all your other classmates. Um, I got bullied a lot and, you know, that really impacted my self-confidence, uh, not only when it came to the things that I wanted to do, when it came to relationships as well. Uh, so I had to do a lot of learning and loving and finding out who I was and what other gifts I have to kind of um, connect back with myself and connect back with my body. Yeah.
How about Fiona? yourself, Fiona? Okay, so for me, hi everyone, my name is Fiona and very nice to meet Rosella and thank you, Martha, for having me. Um, so since young, I did, I've been having issues where um, I would just put on weight very easily and basically, you know, being from um, in Asia, I think it's like we do have all these kind of um, different types of nicknames and things like that. But, you know, growing up, I just really wanted to show people that I am the same, we are the same, and we shouldn't have to be able to put each other in a category or, or you know, be able to body shame someone. I think that that is something that uh, we don't, we shouldn't have to do. Yeah, but whether it's body shame or even our looks and things like that. So having gone through these um, struggles, what do you wish that the world uh, knew, knew about? How about Rosala? Um, I think for me, it's understanding, you know, that we all come in different packages and that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing about, you know, being on this world, right? Everyone is different and we all have our uniqueness and our own strengths and we shouldn't um, actually judge a person by the way that they look because they have so much more to offer. Um, and I think that's um, something hopefully that we all learn, not only about other people, but, you know, learn to be kind and gentle to ourselves and realize that, you know, we are so much more uh, than this package that we came in. Yes, and like I think that a lot to do with a person can be with the insights, like the character, their personality, spiritually, like how do you connect with another one another, I think um, can be very different. So it really isn't like what Rosella has already mentioned, like it's, it's really not about how we look on the outside, but how do we um, bring you know, show each other our strengths and, and we, we do have our weaknesses too, but we shouldn't be ashamed to even like share that as well. You know, I have felt that um, the way to connect with someone and to be with someone, um, you know, even as friends, as like just, you know, meeting each other as, as a new person, um, it's to just be yourself. Like that's the most beautiful person that you can be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think understanding also that having being up in a different weight having a disability having a medical condition that is not a weakness that's just part of life right everyone's born with different things we all acquire different things um and that's not a weakness uh, it's actually something that we can use um as our strength to push us forward yeah yeah that's right and you know going through pcos is like um i kind of never knew i had it and then mm. in my 20s i just went to the hospital one day and because I was kind of like vomiting. And then, then I realized that, um, you know, I have more issues in that area. So um, then it started to make sense that why I was having some raging hormones during that period, because uh, in your twenties, it doesn't, it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. And yeah. learning to cope with it. And then just, you have, to, first thing is I think of all things, we have to accept what we have and who we are. Then we can work on, you know, things that, may affect people. So hormones, of course, like your reactions does affect people. So um, learning to cope with that. And then, um, you know, and sometimes people may not want to hear like um, us explaining every single thing, but then like it's it's kind of good if like people who, who care, who are around you who care, you can share a little bit of, you know, who you are to them. I think it's nothing to be ashamed of because, um, you know, people, care more than you think. I think that, you know, this world, there's a lot more love than we think. Yeah. So I think that it's, it's okay to be able to um, share experiences, especially I think in Asia, we do not really share enough. Like, True. like um, <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about certain things enough. And I it's, think it's, like- There's so much taboo. Yeah, I know, right? Like, and Martha is doing a very good job with that. So she talks about a lot of stuff that we, we don't get to hear. And, you know, it's so good to have and be on this podcast as well. Yeah, mm. thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, right at the get-go, we are already uh, dropping into what's real and authentic, I feel. And uh, I like what you all said that uh, whether it's your weight, disability or illness, you acquire it and it's not a weakness. But the world can be superficial and um, they do look at what is um, what they can see with their eyes and uh, they start making judgments. So uh, I know just now you all talked about what you wish the world knew 
and um, how how do you all deal with this um, discrimination, judgment, um, aggressiveness by people? Uh, I think what you guys have to share will be very useful to listeners out there who might be in similar situations. So, uh, Rose, Rosa, La, uh, La, <laughs> would you uh, like to share more about how you how you dealt with that? Uh, you know, when I think I was younger, I didn't know how to deal with it. So whenever someone said something to me um, or, you know, uh, laughed at me, um, I just buried everything inside. I didn't talk to anyone about it. Um, I just kept everything and it just built up and built up. And then until one day it exploded. Right. But for me now, um, there are coping mechanisms that I've learned, you know, and I've gone to therapy. Um, I've done so many different things. I've gotten a mentor to kind of help me navigate um, what I'm going through and to find the root cause of my depression, of my anger, uh, of my insecurities, uh, and to kind of work through, through it. And right now, you know, whenever someone says something to me that's negative, I understand that it's not about me. Maybe that person is having a tough day. Maybe that person... Uh, was brought up in an environment um, that promoted that, right? Uh, so maybe that person doesn't know any better. So when someone says something not nice to me, you know, um, I just accept it and I just let it go because it's really not about who I am. Unless I've done something bad to hurt that person, then that's on me. But if I come, um, you know, not knowing anything, if it's a stranger especially uh, that says something, I... I understand that it's really not about me. Yeah. Well, I think for me, um, body love is actually a journey. So even in times like, you know, even these days, like st there are times that I slip, you know, and forget. I am very proud of who I am today. But the thing is that there are there are days as well, and sometimes people do get to you because of what they say can hurt. But then you start to think and and, and just. You know, especially when, for example, Chinese New Year, there's lots of like family gatherings and things like that. And then people just like to comment like, hey, you lost weight. Hey, you put on weight. Hey, you know, it's always about your weight. And it's just like, but then what we what we do when we come together in Chinese New Year is like, like we eat so much. <laughs> so it's really kind of like contradicting. So, you know, sometimes people just want to find a conversation and somehow um well locally it's just really like a very common thing to to just talk about your weight so that's something that i think um is very common but people do not realize the impact that they have when they say that so yeah um, they need to own that but we also don't have to call them out on that because I just think that since every year you're going to ask me the same question anyway. So I just think that it's them trying to find a conversation where they don't know how to kind of um, find a different topic that probably is deeper because, you know, sometimes you haven't seen some people for so long who are in your lives, maybe relatives or distant relatives. They just don't know what, what else to say. Not, not all of them are like that, but I find that this um statement where uh, you've put on weight or you've lost weight is very common here as well and um, talking about body love being a a journey i also didn't start out confident or i wasn't born confident as well so um i kind of used to tell myself that at least i have parents i have a f like food and shelter i have like you know all these things that I feel that still a lot of people in the world are suffering from. So I think, you know, a lot of times thinking about just yourself is, is really overrated. I feel that it is good to have self-love. But then again, when you think about it, it's like these problems are not real, real problems. When, when people like just, you just think about there's so much other issues in the world that people are suffering from, then you realize that I'm actually someone who's very lucky to have everything that I have today. So then I feel like, okay, I don't have to dwell on this thing and let's just move on and accept the fact that I'm beautiful in the ways that I am and everyone is beautiful in the ways that they, they are as well, right? So we just gotta find that thing that makes you feel great the way you are and you know that everyone is born with something that they're great at, yeah. Mm. 
so having heard both of you share about um, how you deal with um, negativity and judgment from the world, I'm actually feeling a sense of, um, I feel very moved in my heart, to be honest. I feel a sense of uh, transcendence and Zen from the both of you. <laughs> yeah. And um, the, the inner beauty, you know, what's beautiful inside uh, is coming through from what you're sharing because you have developed um, compassion and uh, this is put onto you but it has formed um, part of your character so i'm feeling this this um yeah this this beauty that is just radiating out of both of you and i'm very moved by it to be honest i didn't expect that i think we all it, it's a learning process right like, like fiona said you know i think none of us are born with that and if we're not surrounded in that environment that actually supports us and tell us hey you know it doesn't matter um, and especially in Asian culture, there's so much emphasis on how a woman looks like, right? Uh, and it goes back centuries of how, you know, actually women, what, what was the purpose of us being on this earth, right? Uh, long time ago, it was just to get married and to have kids. And of course, you know, your looks are the first thing that, you know, ma makes you, I guess, good marriage material, right? Um, with all the arranged marriages and before you don't even get to know a person uh, prior to committing to a relationship, right? Uh, so times have changed, you know, women, we have so much more to offer. And I think understanding that, right? And understanding that there is help out there. So if you're struggling with your uh, body image issues that you can always reach out to someone and it might not be the people that you think they are, you know, it might not be your family. They might not understand that. Uh, but knowing that, you know, there is help out there and that um, it is a journey. Like Fiona said, you know, some days we still have bad days. That's normal, right? But how do you pick yourself up again? Those are the tools that we pick along the way that we learn along the way and put in our toolbox so that um, we get to this place where we can just love and accept. Uh, like, for example, this morning, my mom also, um, my mom has dementia. And she was, uh, she made a comment this morning, oh, your face not very red today. Yeah? Um, and for me, if it was before, when I was a teenager, I would get so angry, you know, because it's like, why are you still commenting on my face, right? Uh, but now I understand that um, one, it's her condition uh, that, you know, makes her forget all these things. And number two, understanding that maybe she went through trauma when she was younger. Maybe her parents emphasized that, you know, on her, that her, the way that she looked was so important to them uh, that she passed it on unconsciously um, to her children, right? So understanding that, you know, she's doing her best, she did her best. And if I have a conversation with her today to argue about it because of her dementia, she's gonna forget it in five minutes, you know? So let's just keep the peace and understand that, yeah, it's fine. Just, it doesn't matter, let it go come back and do what you want to do, center yourself again and just continue with your day. Yeah, I think what Ross mentioned was is very true. Sometimes it's like, you know, if someone says something, we really don't have to turn it into a really big thing that stumps our day or, you know, kind of um, make it like a whole lifelong thing. Because at the end of the day, if you feel bad about yourself, you're the one suffering from it, not anyone else. And yeah, they're not affected <laughs> by it. <laughs> uh -huh. Everyone just moves on with their day. <laughs> and then, yeah, you're just making yourself feel really bad about yourself. And no one's going to just join you. <laughs> so, you know, only you can love yourself and only you can pick yourself up with that. So I, I have to say, I, it's something that I didn't just go through alone. I would, even though I, I say like you have to do the work by yourself, but I was lucky enough to have some life coaches around me, some friends who really love their bodies too. So um, I think having a safe environment to also um, shine and be yourself is also something to look for. Yeah, I think I didn't find that earlier stage in my life, but I started to attract and, and the right people, especially when you work on yourself and you start to um, be yourself more, I think you attract more like-minded people. So that's that's what I think uh, works as well. So I think if you're not into um, paying for certain tools yet, maybe you're not ready yet, maybe you can just start to, you know, I think acceptance is a, is a very important thing in 
when you love yourself, people will love you more as well, right? Yeah, and and I think also protecting the content that you are um, watching and listening to, like for example, on social media, right? If you follow celebrities like Kim Kardashian, for for example, if she makes you feel more insecure about yourself, unfollow her. Right? But if she makes you feel empowered to be sexy, to love your body, then go ahead, follow this person. But if it's doing the opposite effect on you, uh, unfollow. You know, and, and that's not just for um, celebrities, it's for friends. It's for anyone who actually, you know, if they make you feel small about yourself, insecure, mute them. You know, if you don't want to unfollow and be rude, right? <laughs> the Asian thing, just, just mute their posts. Yeah, I think it's so important to protect yourself uh, so that you're not constantly bombarded. Um, with that, yeah. That's right. I think that um, we always have a choice. So sometimes we we get stuck in a corner and we feel that we're being pushed into a corner, but we always have a choice. And, and I grew up not really knowing that. So yeah. I felt that, you know, now that I've come out of it, um, I feel that sometimes if you need help, it's not, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Yeah, because there are a lot of good people around and professionals and people who have probably been through what you have been through. Like, like um, you know, anything to do with looks, so common. But it's anywhere in the world. And, you know, because of um, body shaming, a lot of girls go through things to do with like anorexia and bulimia. I mean, I haven't gone through that, but, you know, sometimes hearing and seeing someone go through it's just heartbreaking because what what did someone say that to make someone be like that i mean it's it's um and it's very damaging for our body whether it's our mental health or our physical health as well yeah so i think that self-love is um something to remind ourselves of daily and yeah like like we mentioned before like n nobody's gonna love you more than you love yourself and that, that took me a long time, I gotta admit that. Hmm. Thank you so much for um, both of you for sharing. So I, I love how uh, we naturally went into how both of you uh, started to build yourself up. And um, I think uh, there's nothing more real than uh, what's happening right now around the world with COVID because what happened when COVID first broke out is we, were, we all had our eyes peeled to the news and uh, people who were reading the news like every hour was getting like more and more hysterical and um, they were getting really uh, quite emotional. And uh, so I love what you are saying, which is uh, really watch what you're watching, the content and how it's making you feel. Because this is very, very true. If it doesn't serve you, it's not building you up, then why? Why get yourself upset? So being able to really remove us a little bit from the news uh, it's very important. Um, being somebody who is spiritual, I've heard this again and again for people who chose to be uh, choose to be very mindful of their vibration. They actually turn themselves off from negative news, including the news, even though it seems like the news is so important because uh, they really want to make sure that um, they don't let their vibration, their mental uh, health be affected. And um, so... That's always the saying, right? If it's important enough, you'll hear it anyway. So <laughs> uh, as I got older and older, I began to understand this. So yeah, I just wanted to add to that. So uh, both of you are really, you know, like ambassadors uh, of your own right because you are representing women and uh, Asian women in particular. So, you know, they say with great responsibility comes great power or with great power comes great responsibility. So, um, like, um, I love to hear uh, how you, how uh, maybe we start with uh, uh, Ro Rosalie, like how did you get to being in the position that you are in? Oh, I think it took years uh, for me, you know, uh, I was actually on a downward spiral when I was in my early 20s because I kept bottling up everything inside. Uh, and the way that I knew how to deal with that was to actually drink, like, like a lot of my friends, you know? You party a lot, trying to numb the feelings, numb the emotion uh, that is really real, right? Uh, telling yourself that, you know, 
um, all the bullying, all the comments, all the laughter that, no, I'm fine, it doesn't affect me. But when in reality, it really does, um, you know, like hit you in the heart. Uh, so it was really hitting rock bottom. Um, I ended up uh, the day after my 27th birthday uh, in the doctor's office because I had alcohol poisoning. And that was really my aha moment, you know, uh, that woke me up, like, what's going to happen if I continued living like this, you know? Possibly, I might end up killing myself even um, at the stage that I was um, at the my mental health at that time. Uh, and it really was me realizing that no one's going to come and save me. So if I want to create a better future for myself, I have to save myself. You know, I had to stop the victim mentality, the blaming mentality, and I had to own up uh, and say, okay, I'm going to change. You know, if the world's not going to change, I'm going to change. And what am I going to do about it? Um, so I reached out to friends who kind of um, were steps ahead of me, you know, uh, who helped me get on that path. Uh, and once you're on the path, the reality is it's hard work. Uh, Fiona, Fiona can probably tell you that as well. You know, it's hard work because you have bad days. Uh, so you have to just keep doing the work every single day, how to protect yourself, put more tools in your belt. And I think like what both me and Fiona um, are doing is that we realize that by sharing our stories uh, to other people uh, and realizing how much it impacts the community, um, that helps us as well, that gives us a purpose. Uh, and for me, um, that really helped. You know, once I started my community platform, um, the shame that I had towards my birthmark, it subsided even more because I realized that, hey, you know, this thing that I thought for my entire life was my biggest flaw, it's kind of my superpower because not a lot of people have it and I can actually use it to push myself forward. I can use it to tell my stories, to create opportunities for other young girls and women. Um, like you said, you know, I, I was in, uh, two years ago, I was in an It Cosmetics campaign that was seen in Sephora stores in Singapore and Malaysia. And uh, for me, that was like, wow, if a young kid, a young person walks into that a store and see my face without makeup on, uh, without any editing on, you know, and think, hey, if she can do that, maybe I can do. Maybe it's time for me to love and accept myself as well. Maybe I'm not so bad. Yeah. Yeah, I so love that's that. Really okay. Doing. I love it. So uh, we have a break and we'll come back and hear the rest of your story. Home Times TV. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself. Invest in your brand and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Own times. Open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. Hi, everyone. This is Martha, and we are Eros Evolution. Today, we're talking about uh, body love, diversity, and inclusiveness. I have uh, Rosal. Ro sorry. Ros, just Ro 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 Rosa, Rosie. <laughs> Rosa, Rosa uh, who is the founder of True Complexion uh, from Malaysia. And I have Fiona Tang, who is a plus size uh, beauty queen. And uh, just before the break, we were um, talking about 
well, they start, we started the show by talking a little bit about the body uh, image uh, issue and uh, what they wish the world knew, how they uh, dealt with judgment uh, from the world and uh, how they've been building themselves up. Uh, so I asked, uh, just before break, uh, Rosala was actually sharing uh, about her, her story, how she worked on herself. She uh, was in this beauty campaign and um, it's, 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 yeah. So uh, please continue to share your story, like uh, how you got to where you are today, like speaking up for women and representing Asian women. Um, yeah, I, I think I kind of covered everything just now. Oh, it okay, really, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, like the minute that I realized that, you know, this is not my weakness, that my birthmark uh, is my superpower, is my strength, and I'm going to use it to help myself push myself forward, share my story. I'm going to help uh, other people, other young women who are struggling with their body image issues and their insecurities by sharing my story and telling people that, you know, it's okay to share your story as well. There's, there's no shame in it. Uh, and then the crazy thing is the minute I started doing that, my life completely shifted and more opportunities came in, you know, and my life was more abundant and I got to know even more wonderful and amazing people. So I think, you know, that's probably the key learning that I had. The minute that I accepted myself and embraced myself, life changed for me. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I, 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 I know it seems like you finished it before the break, but what you just shared is also very powerful because I think it, it, uh, it really takes like a, putting a stamp and saying, you know, uh, well, this is how I um, look at my work. Um, so many years ago, I I decided when I became a sexologist, it's a bit like uh, the show Lord of the Rings, uh, where this, uh, <laughs> this white beard guy, he would put his stick in the sand and he would like, I will not move. And that's kind of where I am. Like I made a declaration that I will hold space for people around sexuality and I would not move. And there were so many ups and downs where I wanted to give up. And um, because I made that vow and commitment to not move, um, things, even though it was really, really difficult um, at first with, uh, in terms of my career and uh, getting uh, enough clients and things like that, uh, things really became much more stable uh, after a few years. So I, I like what you said, like once you made that um, declaration and you decided like this was going to be a superpower, you share your story, not many people uh, were, are brave enough uh, to do so and uh, things started to um, um, become better and better and your life changed uh, as you mentioned so yes I, I, I can uh, totally see how that can come from and uh, that by itself is, a, is an inspiration to all of us because each and every one of us has a voice has a story and uh, we have our unique uh, presence and energy and vibration so even though it may seem like, oh, this topic of body love, diversity, inclusiveness, like it's been talked about many, many times. I think it's really important for listeners to hear it in many, many times in different ways. Uh, so that like sometimes like, you know, they finally, finally get it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, how about yourself, Fiona? Because um, I know you shared with me a little bit because we're friends uh, about your struggle. Um, having people not believe you and then going on and winning that title and what that title meant for you. So do you feel that it was like happily ever after, ever since you won that title? Like being a beauty queen, has it helped you to be more famous, more successful, like richer? Uh, so that uh, would you encourage all of us to enter beauty con competitions? <laughs> I, I think to begin with, like <clears throat> beauty pageants can be overrated. So um, I also noticed that after being in the pet coming into the pageant industry that um, in Singapore, particularly, people are not that, they don't look upon pageants that much. Okay, so um, I would say like Philippines, Thailand, they, they are a, a lot more into pageantry and they have more respect for that. But um, in Singapore, it's it's sort of like, oh, okay, she's a beauty queen. Like, But I think for people who struggle with image, I think this is something that... Um, was very proud for me to have because not only it's just a normal beauty pageant, but who knew that like there would be a plus size pageant. And when I was invited, I just thought that, you know, if this is a platform for me to get the message out there, then why not? Because I think I have what it takes to do it. And if nobody or like, I felt lucky enough, in fact, to be asked and auditioned and then was able to go on to, Latvia and Europe to to actually compete being the only Asian so I just thought that 
wow, like, can you imagine this message is, has never been, like, widely broadcast um, about being plus size and loving your body in Asia. But then after this, it was very, a lot a lot bigger. And you can see that a lot of other Asian plus size models started coming up. And, yeah, more and more, like, body diversity topics um, are actually more current as well as we speak, even with Ross and her birthmark and not just about being big as well. But going back to my story, I actually did struggle with um, a father who is very body conscious because he was um, kind of like overweight to begin with. So he lost a lot of weight uh, in a very short time. And he was growing up, he he made me feel like um, even the way I dress is very important. So he's kind of like image consultant kind of standard kind of father. So it's a bit of a rare kind of a dad, but um, he has his, you know, uniqueness and the way he kind of put that kind of pressure on me when I was very young uh, growing up, it wasn't very healthy, but I think it's his way of kind of trying to protect me from the world because he wants to tell me that, he used to say this really funny thing, um, there's no like, have you seen a fat doctor? He will say. <laughs> and then actually when I grew up, I have seen a fat doctor. <laughs> it's really funny. So it's okay. I'm not saying that there are, I'm just saying people come in different sizes, no matter what profession you're in, right? So it is common to to see someone slim, fat, tall, so short. All these are just like part of who they are, but that doesn't mean that that makes them worse in their job, right? just from their looks. In fact, a lot of people are so professional, even if they look taller or look slimmer, I don't care. <laughs> I think that it is who they are that um, and what they can bring to the table if you are looking at a service, right? Yeah, but my dad make it a point from very young for me to um, understand that he used to drill into me that no one's going to hire you because you are fat. No one's going to like... Um, you know, give you opportunities and things like that. And I I think with the title, I kind of proved him wrong. <laughs> so he, he has a little bit change of mind today, which I felt that that is a very big accomplishment because I think sometimes it is the people that are closest to you that, you know, make you feel very impacted. And, and parents are people who shape your life in the early stage of your life. So what they do is what they do, but how we live our life is really the consequences we bear. So if he can say all he wants, but if I do not turn it into something positive and I just, you know, stay in that that really depressed state, then, you know, things are not going to change. My life's not going to change. I wouldn't have had an opportunity to impact people today. And I think that um, I just feel really, really proud to be an Asian plus size woman of today. And, you know, no better time than now because everyone's talking about you know body love and diversity as well yeah yeah so you were you have been there done that already you know checked it off the box gotten the trophy <laughs> yes <laughs> oh and one thing i want to add also is that you know being a beauty pageant director um for the plus size community i i struggle to find someone as well because i don't want to just find someone who um, participate and represent as a beauty queen because I think it is a benefit to have this title. So even if they represent any country or anyone whom I've trained, I feel that they need to feel they can bring this message across and feel confident. And if they're not, like, of course, we help them and try to, um, you know, instill the confidence slowly and, and make them feel good about themselves. However, I feel that it's not something to be just thrown around because um, people do look up to you with a title and, and I feel like it's to empower. That title gives you that power to empower people, not not abuse it. So I think it's very important to do that. Like, And I think coming onto like podcasts and media, it's not about showing off, but it's more about how can more people feel just a little bit better just by hearing or reading our stories. Yeah, just even if just one person, I think, you know, we have, we come into this one, we're able to help someone else. Like that is good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, both of you have this way of uh, drawing people in, you know, like they want to hear you, they want to know you. 
and uh, uh, yeah, like I mentioned just now, there's this uh, inner beauty that starts to radiate beyond the just looking at your appearance. So it's like when they get to know you a little bit more, the beauty comes out and then, you know, you draw them in. This is how I'm feeling, you know, as I'm speaking to both of you. So it's really, really nice. It's really nice. So um, I think uh, for listeners who are like still a bit confused, like what exactly do you all do uh, in your lives? Maybe you all can uh, share a little bit like, uh, you know, like what do you all do for income, like work, you know, besides representing different uh, campaigns or going on podcasts. So maybe you start with uh, Ro Ros Rosala. <laughs> Uh, you know, so I run a community platform called True Complexion. I'm an advocate for diversity and inclusion. Uh, so under um, True Complexion, I do different things. One, I work with uh, different brands uh, to help them create more inclusive campaigns, you know, because some, some companies, they really don't know what to do, uh, where to get talents um, who have disabilities, for, for example. Uh, so I act as kind of an inclusive um, talent agency. And also I provide like a branding and branding consultation to clients. Um, and at the same time, I also do workshops, uh, fundraising events. I do keynote um, sessions to kind of speak to um, adults. And also I, I go to schools as well to speak to uh, young teenagers, young people, um, helping them, you know, understand that uh, their own negative story doesn't have to be part of their current story so that they can move forward with more confidence, you know, um, so that they can embrace themselves and actually create a better life for them. I love it. So you are doing it at a really high level because you speak at keynote and uh, you are already um, uh, inspiring girls and women uh, to really find their own voice and be all that they can be. So I love that. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm trying to be the person that I never had and wish I had when I was younger. Yeah. So for me, if I can help someone, uh, kind of just shave off all the years of struggling that I went through uh, for them to avoid that, to get to where I am quicker, um, then my work is done. Yeah, yeah. because, um, you know, we didn't have these role models and by wanting to be a role model for other people, there is a lot of responsibility and uh, there's a lot of uh, inner work, self-awareness that uh, both of you obviously have. And uh, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's important because uh, yeah, like, anyway, uh, like, you know, I'm holding space for the topic of sexuality. You're holding the space for uh, self-love, body love. That's very important. So how about you, Fiona? S sorry. So so with myself... What do you do like, for a living? I, yeah, so I, <laughs> yeah. So what I do for a living, basically, I help people to feel healthier and more confident about themselves through beauty and wellness products that I broker. Um, they are from the States, but basically my mission is to help people to have a makeover if they do not feel like good about themselves. It's not about just putting on makeup, but at the same time, we go through conversations when it's personal, like when you have a one-on-one, -on -one, it's like, you know, what, what are they struggling with that we can see? And also like, um, yeah, I think Master also wants to uh, mention something a bit later. But anyways, I'm, I'm, yeah, so what I do is actually helping people to feel great about themselves. So if, if you know, you don't feel good enough, like, you know, we can always just talk and, and yeah, at the same time, while I educate people about um, skincare, makeup, um, it, it doesn't have to be covering a buff mark, okay? So it's about being the best um, version of yourself because I felt that, that was drilled into me when I was very young, but then um, maybe it was kind of like in a different way, like in my dad's unique way, but um, there are more positive ways to help people to feel really good because I think it's just that some people lack of certain opportunities to be educated on certain areas in their life. It doesn't mean that, you know, there's no ugly person I believe in this world. So other than feeling that self-love, um, from the inside, but um, I think making some effort on the outside is also a little bit important, right? So it's just to be presentable, right? And um, just like how go talking about going to interviews and things like that. So I think um, this is the group of women that I want to help because they feel, some of them feel helpless that they don't have that 
opportunity just because maybe financially, maybe time, maybe something in their life is kind of stopping them or maybe they feel, felt that they didn't deserve um, to look better. But then the thing is, um, with that, I feel that I can help them to feel better about themselves, not through just the outside, but also with the inside. So I love talking to people, and as you can see, and um, I think women empowerment is something that uh, we should do and help each other, not you know put each other down. In fact, um, women as women we face and be so many roles every day, so um, we do need to be there for each other and support each other. Yeah. Yeah, and can I add on to that? You know what you said. Um, it really is do what makes you feel comfortable. Do what makes you feel confident, right? And that's different for different people. For some, it's dressing up. For some, it's wearing makeup. But for some people, it's the opposite, right? And I also always get, because uh, I um, perform as well. You know, I'm a singer-songwriter as well. So I go on stage. And when I'm on stage, I love my makeup. I love to get, you know, all girly with my dresses. And sometimes when I do photo shoots as well, you know, I, I like to go crazy with my makeup. And a lot of people have asked me that before. You know, like, isn't it a contradiction? Uh, you know you're promoting loving your skin but at the same time you're covering it up with makeup and for me it's like i don't feel the contradiction because it depends it's not really about whether you put on makeup or not it's about how you feel about yourself when you put it on when you take it off do you like that version of yourself that reflection that you see in the mirror and if you're okay with both then go ahead have fun you know that's what makeup is here about for you know it's not about covering yourself it's about expressing yourself in different ways being creative with it right and being comfortable and confident and just being flirty and playing with it so i think that's the thing uh when it comes to makeup like fiona said if it helps you and you feel good do it there's no there's nothing to be ashamed of you know yeah mm -hmm. i love it i was going to ask you about the makeup uh topic because you know uh Previously, we had a chat about it. And so I'm glad you brought it up. Also, what I like, uh, what you just shared is, said is uh, makeup is supposed to be, you know, it's play, you know, it's an expression and it's supposed to make you feel good. So who are these people to judge you, you know, when it is your own, it's on your own relationship with your own body? Yeah, and, and it's, it's really for clothes, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. same for clothes, like, oh, this is too sexy, this is too this, this is too that. But it's like, if I like it, if I feel confident, if I feel comfortable, then just rock it, right? Whatever you are, um, just, yeah, have fun with it. Sometimes I think we take a, a lot of things a bit too serious when yeah, it's, a bit too you know, it's not meant to be, yeah. Yeah, and I also like what you said about clothes because when it comes to feminism, it means different things to different people, like you said. So whether you choose to wear something sexy or revealing, right? Really, seriously, it's none of anybody's business. You can say the person is slutty, you can, but the person can feel totally empowered. Like that's that's really up to them. And uh, similarly for sexuality, right? Whether what you choose outside, uh, choose to do outside of the bedroom, what you choose to do inside of the bedroom, it's actually also your own expression and it's actually also none of anybody's business. So it's so important to just navigate this for ourselves. So I totally love um, everything that you just shared. So I want to actually, uh, yes, yes, uh, Fiona, you want to say something? No, it's okay. So speaking of what Ross was just sharing, I think um, being also... Part of why I do is wellness, right? And people tend to think like, oh, they will comment like, oh, you can lose weight, ah. or you, or even on straight times or in, in, in certain medias, if um, I was being showcased, then there will be a lot of comments from public saying that, oh, are you advocating for people to eat more? So actually it's not, it's, it's um, you know, I, I have, I also just live a balanced lifestyle and I also want to achieve um, the always the better version of myself because I think that is what self love is right. So I think it is really not what uh, people keep talking about and and uh, whatever they assume, but is how you want to look best in in any way that Ross also mentioned. So I love wearing sexy clothes, like she said, <laughs> and I also love putting on makeup. And I just think that even without makeup, I also feel good about myself. And I mean, it's like sometimes you go to the market, you're not going to just put on makeup, right? You just got to just feel good about um, going there. And I think I'm fully okay if like my friends rock up to me and just ask me, hey, how come you look so different without makeup? But it's like, that's me. That's just the way I am. Yeah. Mm. 
So uh, at this point, I want to just uh, quickly talk a little bit about uh, di diversity and inclusiveness because uh, this is after all the title of the show. So I know that for Rosala, you you do have this talent agency. So maybe you can speak to what is diversity and inclusiveness and why is it so important? Oh, there's so many layers to this uh, because I think a lot, a lot of times when we talk about diversity and inclusion, uh, especially in Malaysia, right, we talk about racial diversity, we talk about religious diversity, uh, but we kind of forget people um, who are living with different medical conditions, uh, different disabilities, uh, different uh, skin conditions, right? And I think a lot of times when we talk about diversity and inclusion as well, uh, we talk about things that we can see physically but we don't realize that a lot of people are living with invisible uh, disabilities, invisible illnesses, uh, and they need to be included in the conversation as well. Yeah, uh, so there is a lot of layers, like even under the mental health umbrella, for example, right? People always think, oh, mental health, they're talking about depression uh, and anxiety, uh, but there's just so many other um, disabilities and I think uh, so many other conditions uh, and even you know under the spectrum of disability a lot of the conversations that I've heard uh, from parents are you know they lump our children all in the same category regardless if you have a physical disability if you have a mental disability right people require different things but sometimes we all get uh, lumped up in one group uh, but people different people dif need different things right so understanding that yeah Mm -hmm. that the world is really full of yeah uh, okay so i have a little mm -hmm. joke uh so so lately i've been having like a a pain on my right knee so mm -hmm. uh, when i go up and down stairs it really hurts probably from overuse uh the cartilage and what whatnot so yesterday i was at the gym and uh, the only thing i can do comfortably is really walking um so i was uh, watching this uh, action movie at the gym uh, tv and then i was like why is it that we never see people limping, you know, like with like difficulties with walking or running away from the monster? I'm like, yeah, they need to include more diversity when it comes to action shows. Like what, what, do, what do people do when they can't run away from the monster? Like, we need to see such representation. Yeah, so, and, so, yeah so, and, yeah. and I think also, you know, how people with disability or uh, facial differences like myself are represented in the media, you're always the villain or you're always... Uh, the one that gets bullied, oh, the, the so pitiful person, you know, or either that or you're always the one that, oh, I have to be like the, the hero. If I do, um, there's always a joke that, that, that my friend says, you know, how, how many people um, in a wheelchair do you need to uh, change a light bulb, for example, right? Uh, like you do daily things and you get celebrated for it. Like, oh, this person did this, like, wow, it's such a great thing. But they're like, I'm just living my life, doing everything, uh, daily thing that that other people do. So I really hope to see more of that, you know, in the media. Just people just doing daily things. You don't have to be celebrated in that uh, superhero way. You don't have to be, you know, the villain. You don't have to be the the person that's, you know, the, the pitiful person. Because people just want to live their lives and be represented and be seen as that, right? Everyday people doing everyday things. Yeah, so it's about mm. uh, really letting them be, uh, respecting their um, own agency, and also um, being being okay with, um, um, yeah, just let them be, you know, don't pity them, they don't need your pity. Uh, so uh, we have to wrap up the show, so uh, um, maybe just circle back to Fiona, any last words? Yeah, I think speaking of what you guys just mentioned, it's like, in the media, a lot of times if you watch movies or series and things like that, it's like, the girl has to lose weight, then they can become mm. the Prince Charming and things like that. That's, <clears throat> that's, excuse me, that's not what is supposed to meant to be. I mean, if, you know, they can have more inclusivity and diversity in terms of, it doesn't have to be a plus size lady, it can be someone who's any size, right? But um, yeah, it's not like you have to always be slim, then you can get your Prince Charming. I think that is totally overrated and that's not what real life is. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I really uh, appreciate both of you so much. So for listeners out there, you can fo follow Ross at facebook.com, uh, True Complexion with an X, and then uh, on Instagram and LinkedIn, uh, Rosal Ro Rosala uh, Marie. That's R-E-Z-E-L-L-A uh, Marie. And uh, for uh, Fiona, it will be miss.fi.t uh, Instagram. And uh, today is the last episode. So for me, uh, it is... 
uh, been a pleasure and uh, you can follow me, uh, please follow me uh, on uh, eroscoaching.com. So subscribe to my newsletter so that you never miss a thing. So once again, thank you so much to both of you for coming on the show and sharing your, sh your stories and also uh, showing us what inner beauty looks and feels like. Thank you so much for having us. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Martha. Nice meeting you, Ross. Nice meeting you too.